Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Okay, so now we are reaching uh, the third chapter of this Bio 150 My name is Miss Fatiha Abdullah uh, I'll be discussing a little bit on the intro for photosynthesis We have about seven learning outcomes to be achieved at the end of the uh, chapter 2 One is to be able to describe the structure of leaf and chloroplast. Two, to define the term of photosynthesis. Three, to be able to explain the electromagnetic spectrum and pigment. Four, to be able to explain two main stages, light and dark reaction in photosynthesis. Five, to be able to define photorespiration. Six, to describe the alternative pathway C4 and CAM. And seven, to explain the factors that are affecting photosynthesis rate. For this session, I will uh, at least uh, explain to you number one, two, and three, which is the structure of leaf, the term of photosynthesis, and also the electromagnetic spectrum. So, what is photosynthesis? Okay, photo is light, synthesis is to put together. When you have a words there, photosynthesis, meaning that you are using light to put something together or to synthesize something, to build something. Okay. Then photosynthesis convert light energy into chemical energy of food. So basically photosynthesis is a process whereby the plant using light from sun to convert it into a form of chemical energy in the form of food. Okay. Then photosynthetic organism is actually are the one who run the photosynthesis. They capture the solar energy and then they transform the solar energy into the chemical energy, which is will be kept in a form of carbohydrate. So indirectly or directly, photosynthesis is the basic process uh, in all entire living world. Okay, bear in mind for the photosynthesis, not only plant can run photosynthesis okay we have a uh, few more organism that are capable in doing photosynthesis so let's say here i have five photos of bacteria of algae of euglena of uh, cyanobacteria and also some higher plant okay so basically this photosynthetic organism will be classed under the autotroph so what is autotroph auto meaning self troph is fit so autotroph is um, is a group of organism that can produce their own food so they are basically the producer of the biosphere we have two types of autotroph one is photo autotroph the one that we will focus in this chapter and the second one is chemo autotroph so for the photo autotroph they use energy from sunlight to make organic molecule from water and from carbon dioxide you can see the smiling sun over there they are giving uh, the sun giving the sun is giving some energy to the plant okay you can also see the plant is smiling okay and the next one uh, is the chemo autotroph also use energy not coming directly from the sun but then they take energy from the inorganic substance such as sulfur and ammonia to also make their own food if you can see there the purple uh, written chemosynthesis that kind of organism use certain chemical energy to make the food Okay, we know that photosynthesis happen in plant and the major location for the photosynthesis is the leaf. Okay, most function of the leaf and plant take place in the mesophyll cell whereby it is a part of plant that converts sunlight and nutrient into chemical energy and this energy will be released later. So the mesophyll is a combination of primarily two material, the palisade and the spongy parenchyma. The one that been arranged uh, neatly at the upper level is the one that we call palisade and they are loosely arranged at the lower level is a spongy parenchyma although spongy mesophyll cell do not contain as many chlor chloroplasts as those found in palisade cell they play equally important role in photosynthesis so chloroplasts work to convert light energy to the sun into sugars that can be used later by the cell we can see also there are lots of thylakoids and that thylakoid are the membrane bound compartment inside the chloroplast and thylakoid, thylakoid is actually the epicenter for the photosynthetic light reaction they contain the chlorophyll for the plant which is the light collecting pigment chloroplast can be found in the cells of mesophyll it is the interior tissue of the leaf and each of the mesophyll 
cell does contain about 30 to 40 chloroplasts. And inside that chloroplast, we have chlorophyll or the pigment. I've mentioned to you before, we have few pigment such as chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B and carotenoid. Okay, so this chlorophyll here will be arranged uh, nicely inside the membrane of thylakoid. And what is the thylakoid? Lots of thylakoid will be stacked in a column and that single column we call as grana or granum. So inside this grana, we have, um, you will later found that the light reaction does happen at the thylakoid membrane. And chloroplast does contain a stroma. So what is stroma? It is a dense interior fluid where it is the colorless fluid surrounding the grana within the chloroplast. Okay, let us uh, draw a, a leaf here. Okay, I'll show you how to draw a leaf. So basically, this is a very simple leaf. If we take out one part of this one, okay, one section here, I'll try as best as I could. I'm so sorry because I just have this color of pen here. We are in PKP. Okay, so let's say we start with the layer, upper layer. Then we have few section of cells here. Okay, then we have an arrangement of palisade mesophyll cell. Okay, you can see that the arrangement is quite neat. Then we have a spongy mesophyll cell being arranged throughout the layer of mesophyll loosely compared to this palisade here okay and then you have we have a lower cell okay here i want to show you where's the stomata so here we have the gut cell and these are the stoma or the if you have uh, lots of the stoma then we call that the stomata so here we have the stoma here we have the gut cell okay then these are the layer of spongy mesophyll these are the palisade mesophyll so if let's say i take one of this spongy mesophyll here and i make a drawing here okay we can make it a little bit bigger then you have a very um, conventional plant cell. You have a kind of a rectangle uh, shape of plant cell with a large vacuole here. You have, a, let's say, we have the nucleus and we have lots of chlorophyll. Okay, sorry, we have lots of chloroplasts here. The, these are the pigment. Okay. These are the, sorry, these are the organelle. So, let's say we take one of this chloroplast here. Okay. And then we zoom in. So, these are the crucial part for this drawing, which is normally for your final exam, they ask you this uh, kind of question. You have to draw a chlorophyll. So, we, let's say we have a thylakoid here. Okay. So, this stack of thylakoid we call as grana. So, I will draw three columns of grana here. Okay, let's say these are the grana. Okay, then it's been connected through one another. Okay, done. So, the task for you is to label every single drawing part here. And I would like you to email your lecturer the drawing, which is this one is for the um, kind of quiz for this uh, learning outcome number one, number two, and number three. So could you please label for me this one, this one, this one, the whole stack of here, what is this? this one and what else um, one two three four five and might probably this one what is this one what is this one what is uh, this one okay and
kita sih. Thank you. So all together we can say that photosynthesis is about using carbon dioxide with water with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll to produce glucose and oxygen. And please bear in mind that you have to remember this equation below. 6 molecules of CO2 plus 6 molecules of water and you, ha you, are, you will produce C6H12O6 or 1 molecule of glucose plus 6 molecules of oxygen. And do bear in mind at the lower and upper level of your arrow there, please put sunlight and chlorophyll. So in words, simply say that carbon dioxide plus water produce glucose and oxygen with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll. The splitting of water molecules is also called as photolysis of water, whereby during the light reaction of photosynthesis, the absorption of light by the chlorophyll results in the loss of electron from it. So chloroplast will split water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, incorporating the electrons of hydrogen into sugar molecules. So photosynthesis is a redox process in which water is oxidized and carbon dioxide is reduced. Okay class, the raw material for the whole process of photosynthesis are carbon dioxide and water. Okay, for, for, for the first part, we look at the water first. So where comes the water? The roots will absorb the water and the water will be moved up through the whole body of a plant through a vascular tissue. So here comes the xylem. Okay, xylem functions in moving the, uh, in, in dispersing the water throughout the plant uh, cells. So carbon dioxide and oxygen, both of these gases will enter and will leave the leaf through the stomata. Carbon dioxide will enter a leaf through stomata and diffuses into chloroplast. So where does the chloroplast? It's located in the mesophyll cell. Oxygen also at the end of the photosynthesis will exit the leaf through the stomata. In stroma, inside the chloroplast, you have the carbon dioxide that previously been uh, coming in through the uh, stomata. So this carbon dioxide will be combined with water molecule coming from the root just now to form the sugar. So the whole process here needs some energy. So who provide the energy? The sunlight provide the energy and they will be ab absorbed by the chlorophyll and other pigment. So this pigment here when they absorb solar energy, at the same time, the electron will be energized and the carbon dioxide will be reduced to form the carbohydrate, which is the end product of the photosynthesis. As one of the photosynthetic uh, organism or photosynthetic autotroph can trap the light energy to be changed or to change into glucose and oxygen. We, human, and the animals cannot do that. Sunlight is a type of energy that we call as radiation. And the full range of radiation is called as electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is the entire range of electromagnetic energy. And it is a term used by scientists to describe the entire range of light that exists. So from radio wave to gamma wave, most of the light in the universe in fact is invisible to us okay electromagnetic spectrum such as television and radio wave such as microwave and x-ray and also gamma ray is an alternating electric and magnetic field so electromagnetic spectrum is made up of waves from different length and they form bands and the light are able to travel in rhythmic wave so certain red and blue wavelength of lights are the most effective in photosynthesis because they have exactly the right amount of energy to energize or to excite the chlorophyll electron and boost the electron out of their orbit to a higher energy level okay let's have a look at this of uh, colorful uh, here we can see that starting from your left we can clearly see that there are gamma ray x-ray uv the visible light infrared or the microwave and also the radio wave you can see that from the left part they started with 380 nanometer meaning that they have shorter wavelength 
but they are higher in energy level and we move to the right part where we have a 750 nanometer wavelength even though they are longer wavelength but they are in lower energy such as radio from the previous slide we know that we have visible light okay and this visible light and other form of radiation will made up an, an individual packet of energy known as photon I have described to you before that if you have longer wavelength photon, you will have less energy. But then with shorter wavelength photon, the energy will keep, will keep uh, increasing. So the visible light is ranging from 380 nanometer to 750 nanometer. And what is the pigment? Okay. So pigments are the chemical substances which reflect few wavelengths of the visible light, making them a colorful the plants the flowers and even the skin of animals have the pigments that give them a specific color and all these chemical compounds have the capacity to absorb some wavelength so the pigments are the substance that absorb visible length so different pigment will absorb different wavelength of light Okay, plant pigments include many molecules such as porphyrin, such as carotenoids, such as anthocyanins and betalins. And all bio biological pigments selectively absorb certain wavelength of light while reflecting the others. The slide is showing you a chloroplast containing four columns of grana. Okay, and it shows you what happened to light when it strikes a leaf. So the light may be absorbed or the light may be transmitted or passed through or the light may be reflected or bounce back. So the question here is why leaves are green? Okay, we have looked at the previous slide that we have pigments and one of the pigments are named as chlorophyll and chlorophyll is a pigment that can be found in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast in the leaf and the leaves appear green because chlorophyll just absorbs red and blue light but reflect back and transmit the green light so that's why our eye can just see the green color of a leaf so light that been absorbed are the sources for photosynthesis. Chloro, uh, chloroplast contains several pigments. Okay, the one main pigment we call as chlorophyll A, and listed here are the four accessory pigment, namely as chlorophyll B, carotenoids, xanthophyll, and also phycocyanin. Okay, chlorophyll A is the main pigment where we, we also call that as a green pigment. They basically absorb the blue and red light and they are the one who initiate the light dependent reaction. Chlorophyll B is also a blue green pigment and absorb blue and red also and they reflect the blue green. Carotina is the yellow orange pigment. They absorb blue green light and reflect the yellow so that's why the color their color is the yellow orange and they also absorb excessive light that will damage chlorophyll xanthophyll is a deep yellow pigment they absorb blue green light and they reflect back the yellow color and the phycocyane is a purple pigment they absorb green and yellow and they reflect blue or purple light okay so Bear in mind that chlorophyll is a green pigment that gives most plants their color. And the reason why the plant is green is because they absorb other color such as red and blue in a way that green light is reflected out since the pigment does not absorb it. Chlorophyll is the molecule that actually trap the sunlight and we call that as a photoreceptor. So it is found in the chloroplast of green plant and is what makes the green plants green. So the basic structure of a chlorophyll is a porphyrin ring that been coordinated to a central atom. Previously we can see that the chlorophyll structure is look like a stick. Okay, the molecular structure of chlorophyll is basically consists of a chlorine ring whose four nitrogen atoms surround a central magnesium atom and they have several other attached side chains and a hydrocarbon tail. So this chlorophyll molecule 
also has a hydrophobic tail that embeds in the molecule into the thylakoid membrane. So the head of chlorophyll molecule is actually a ring called a porphyrin. The porphyrin ring of chlorophyll, which has the magnesium atom at its center, is the part of a chlorophyll molecule that capable in absorbing the light energy. So this structure is quite similar to the hemoglobin in a red blood cell where the magnesium will be replaced by the iron. And different side chains will characterize each type of chlorophyll molecule and they alter the absorption spectrum for light. For instance, the only difference between chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B is that chlorophyll B has an aldehyde instead of a methyl group at the carbon number 7 position. We have we have two graphs here showing that different pigments absorb light differently. For the first one is a graph of the absorption or the relative rate of photosynthesis and what are the wavelength. Okay, we can clearly see here that the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A is best at the violet blue and the red light. Okay, the B one or the right one is showing us how the three pigments work differently at different wavelengths. Okay, so here we have chlorophyll B, chlorophyll A and beta carotene or carotenoid. You can see the wavelength uh, or you can refer the best peak for this wavelength in our previous slide. Paper chromatography is one of the experiments that we supposed to run in our lab. So the principle behind this paper chromatography is basically we want to identify what are the pigments that we have in a certain uh, leaf of a plant. So chromatography is basically a method of separating mixture by using a moving solvent on a filter paper. We will drop a mixture of solution at the end of the paper and that end of the paper will be dipped into the solvent without submerging the spot itself. So we let the below liquid or basically the ethanol to bring up all the pigment to the upper level. Okay, so paper chromatography is used as a qualitative analytical chemistry technique for identifying and separating color mixture like pigment. Here we have about, uh, let's say here we have at the top is the carotene and the second one we have the xanthophyll. The third we have the blue green and the fourth we have the yellow green uh, pigment. So these four level of color here representing four different pigment. So what happens when light is absorbed by a molecule such as chlorophyll? The energy from light will excite an electron from its ground state energy to an excited energy level, which is very unstable. So this high energy electron can have several fates. For most compounds that absorb light, the electron simply returns to the ground state and the absorbed energy is converted into heat. But then, if eliminated, an isolated solution of chlorophyll will fluoresce and giving off light and heat. When isolated, chlorophyll cannot pass that energy to other molecule and much of the energy is released in the form of fluorescence. So that's why when extracted, chlorophyll will glow red. Okay, so this is what happens when you have a photon coming from the sunlight. The photon will hit the chlorophyll molecule, making the electron become excited. And the electron is supposed to be transferred into another electron receptor. But this won't happen because the chlorophyll has been isolated. So the chlorophyll cannot pass the energy to other molecule and much of the energy is released in the form of fluorescence. So that's why when we extract the chlorophyll, the chlorophyll will glow red. So we have reached uh, our last slide here. So I would like to ask you at the end of this session, can you describe the structure of leaf and chloroplast? Can you define the term of photosynthesis? Can you explain the electromagnetic spectrum and pigment? 
if you manage to answer all these questions, meaning that we have reached or we have fulfilled our three learning outcome. With that, thank you for listening. Bye.